Next, I'd ask Craig Sperry, sponsor, to come forward for Articles 65 and 66. Home rule petitions regarding longevity pay and retirement benefits for town and county employees. Thank, I'd like to thank the Civic League for the opportunity and the, uh, the town of Nantucket for citizens to be allowed to bring citi uh, citizen articles forward. I think it's uh, a terrific opportunity. Um, number 65 uh, regards, like Peter said, longevity pay. And I, I have some, uh, some simple visual aids here that I'll attempt to use. I would have sent them to you, Sarah. I didn't realize that I could have. Uh... Anyhow, with uh, the existing. Makes it a little bit more that way, the camera can do it. That's it, perfect. Good? Right, yeah, right. With the existing um, longevity pay program with the town, there are some changes that have been made. Um, the selectmen and the administration have been working on some changes. However, the majority of town employees are using a system that uses the following. Five years, you get 2% of your base pay. Can everyone see that? Uh, 10 years, 3%, 15 years, 4%, and 20 years, 5%. Um, I don't think that this is necessary to, uh, to offer to be competitive, to have a, a competitive uh, compensation package. And what happens is it ends up increasing the amount of pensions that the townspeople are on uh, eventually uh, entitled or, or required to pay. Uh, as an alternative, the DPW has a plan that is in effect right now, and they are paid a set amount each year. So in this case, you'll see they receive a $1,000 one time a year payment, set amount, 10 years they get 1,000, 15 years they get 1,200, 20 years they get 1,500, and 25 years they get 1,700. Um, to me, this is it right here. The town uh, should offer this to, to all employees. If it's you know, good enough for the DPW, it should be good enough for all the employees. And it's cost effective and it's sustainable. Um, if there are no other questions, if there are any questions on 65, I'm happy to answer them, but I would, uh, uh, I know time's an issue, and I, I would choose to go on to Article 66, if, if that's all right with you. Okay. Uh, Article 66 refers to having new town employees join a defined contribution pension plan, and that compares with the defined benefit plan, which is currently in effect. The current employees for the town receive a pension from the Barnstable County Retirement System. Uh, what I'm proposing is that newly hired employees for the town start a defined contribution plan. This is more typically known as a 401k style. It's, it's actually called 450, 457B for government employees. Um, it offers additional benefits that 401k plans don't offer. So. Um, the most important thing is the 401 style K, 401k style plan, the def defined contribution, is immediately sustainable. The big problem with the existing plan is it is not sustainable. Um, I don't know how many people are aware. I've been trying to make <clears throat> people aware because we're not, I feel, not getting enough information from various sources that the amount of unfunded liabilities is big and getting bigger. Uh, here we have 52 million for pensions alone. There's an additional 52 million for OPEB, which stands for other post-employment benefits. Uh, typically it's health care for retirees, for town employees that have retired. You combine those together, it's $104 million as of the end of uh, 2012. Interestingly, uh, Bruce Miller, when he was on the Finance Committee in 2006, was quoted in a letter or an article in the Inky Mirror, and it's an interesting quote. Uh, allow me here. He says, actually, I have it. I have it somewhere else. He says, "We need to have a discussion on a community-wide basis that this is what we're up against. We could be looking at a 60 million or 70 million deficit over five years." Now, this is in 2006. So here we are, seven years later, and the, the unfunded deficit, the unfunded deficit, is now 104. So Bruce was remarkably accurate in his, in his prognosis there. So um, good for Bruce, but, but bad for the town. So here we have an opportunity by changing the pension plans for town employees to a defined contribution plan 
instead of the existing plan through the Barnstable County retirement system and have it be started the first time that, that as soon as that new employee signs up, it's sustainable from day one. This plan, there's, there's some serious issues there. Um, the more, I don't think a lot of people understand how serious this is. And I think if there was more light shown on this issue, you would realize that the town really should be looking at this. This is happening across the country. This is, this is nothing uh, that's happening to Nantucket in a, uh, in a vacuum. Uh, you've had towns and cities across the country already make this switch. Uh, you had San Diego last summer. You had uh, San Jose approve this by overwhelming margins to, to leave these defined benefit plans and start with the defined contribution plans. So I'm, I'm bringing this forward to town meeting, and I'm, uh, I'm hoping people support this because this is uh, it's a serious issue. It doesn't get a lot of airplay, but I think, uh, I think it's important enough that people should be aware of it and uh, vote to make the change. And I'm happy to answer any questions. Good. Any questions? Um, you can step up to the microphone if you like. In the interest of time. And if you would identify yourself. Yeah, uh, Tris the... Damon, uh, Nantucket resident. What, I'm a little, I don't understand the vernacular. Can you just expound a little bit and explain what each is in a short paragraph? As far as the difference between the plans? Yeah, and sure. what they actually mean, yeah. Sure. Um, this is obviously a very complicated subject, and I, you know, in a few minutes it's difficult to explain everything. But in a nutshell, a defined benefit plan, the, the employee that is on that plan, they basically get, when they retire, a set amount every month. Well, let's say it's, you know, $2,000. With a defined contribution plan, oh, and I should say, with this plan, you have to be vested for, you have to be in the plan for 10 years before you're eligible to get benefits. With a defined contribution plan, if you're familiar with the 401k, if you go to work for a company, they take out a deduction for a 401k, that goes into your account. That's, that's your money. And so if you leave the company after a year, two years, five years, all that money goes with you. If you leave, this, you know, if you left the, uh, the um, town before your 10-year vesting, it's, I'm not an expert on this, but if you're not vested, you're not, you're not entitled. You might be entitled to a small amount, but it's, you're, not, you're not getting the same benefit. So I don't, I don't know if that completely answers your question, but I just sort inter of interject very quickly. I think that the key distinction is the defined benefit plan is one that obliges the employer to do something in the future for an amount of money. It's like a pension. The defined contribution is you're the definer of your future. The employer can choose to pitch in some money, but they're not on the hook in the long run. The question we have, uh, for the first one is, can present employees convert to a 401k plan? That's a very good question. I, um, I don't know. I don't know the answer to the question. Um, and I, I should have said, if I didn't say it already, this is only regarding new employees. Existing employees for both articles are not, not affected at all. This, is, this doesn't affect existing employees a bit. Which brings us directly to the next question. It may be good for the town, but how does it affect the new employees with emphasis on new? Well, I mean, the diff there is a difference between the plans. Um, you are taking, you're assuming more risk with a 401k. Um, you're, you're, subject to the, the, vari the variations in the market as anyone is. Um, but there are companies that offer guidance or, or uh, you know, for example, Vanguard, huge, huge company that, that has plans available. You can just join Vanguard's plan and they, they take care of all the details. You don't have to be a financial expert to plot your 401k. You can say Vanguard, Take it over for me, and they and they they have excellent track records. You can go on their website and see how they performed, and they they performed. In fact, they performed better than Barnstable County Retirement. I would okay. say. Okay, uh, we've used up our time. Good Thank you guys. very much. Right. Can I just ask you? Sure. Go ahead. Uh, rather than go to the mic, I think everybody can hear me. Mm -hmm. uh, the information you provided is the plans which exist now. Mm -hmm. I'm not familiar totally with Massachusetts law, but are those part of the negotiated agreements? And if they're part of negotiated agreements, why would it not be the responsibility of the town and the labor unions to negotiate what you're proposing, as opposed to 
the town government change or whether or not the town government can change it? Again, a good question. I, I of course, met with town council to have the articles presented in a legal form. Um, this is a home rule petition. Article 66 would be a home rule petition. So it would be required to go to the legislature and, and pass their muster. Um, the details of it, you know, I don't know. But I feel the town should have the right to have a, a say in their, in their future. Thank you, Craig. Sure. Next up is Jeffrey Allen, who is a sponsor of Article 67, Separation of Fire and Police Departments. Mr. Allen. He appears to not to be here. So we will move on to our final uh, presentation. John McLaughlin on Article 85, Abolish Use of Martins Lane for Motorized Traffic. Mr. McLaughlin. I think we're in a position to take some more questions on any of the topics that we have covered today. We have about uh, three or four minutes. Mr. Barnes? I was curious about the uh, proposed um, $1,000 uh, per year and the $1,200 per year. Is that per year added to the salary or is it when you reach your 10-year anniversary your base goes up by a thousand. I didn't figure out exactly how those numbers fit into the overall scheme. <coughs> it's my understanding it compounds, so it would be a thousand, the next year maybe a thousand plus, and then two thousand plus. So each year you would get a thousand dollars or compounded thousand dollars. I'm not sure that's that that right. builds up pretty I'm fast. Sure. <laughs> if I could interject here, I think I'm not sure that's correct. Mr. Atherton, do you have? Can you offer any clarification on this? I'll, um, I'll try to, and I'll look to my compatriot over on the left to see if I'm close, Patty. But uh, I don't. Uh, my understanding is the longevity. You have your comp basic compensation, and that may or may not be adjusted each year by contract if you're in the union. There's what's called an across-the-board, usually negotiated rate, so everybody may get their pay raised by 1% or 5% or whatever that negotiated rate is. But the longevity is either based on a percentage of your base or a fixed payment. They are not added to your base and they in and of themselves don't compound. The only compounding is in effect if your underlying compensation increases. That would cause the other number if it was a percentage to increase as a percent of the base. If it's a fixed amount, which is where some of the negotiations are going now, that fixed amount is paid each year, but it is not compounded in the sense that I think was talked about. Am I close, Patty? Yeah, so the concept is more of a step that occurs once, and then you're one step higher, but it, you don't get the next step every year. You don't go up a step every year. You go up one step and you stay at that level after five years or 10 years or 15 years. Well, if you're talking about the longevity again, the longevity, yeah. each year at the end, usually it's paid in a lump sum and at the end of the year, if you're on the $1,000 schedule, for example, for the DPW employees, and you're paid 65,000 for your annual compensation, you'll get $1,000 lump sum, so to speak, probably taxes are withheld, but anyway, you get $1,000. And you get that for each of the years until the amount changes in accordance with the schedule. Does that make sense? Yeah, you know, it doesn't become two thousand the next year, three thousand. No, the year. no, no, no. The, the amount is annual. fixed for the right. period of time the uh, labor agreement is negotiated. All right. On behalf of the Nantucket Civic League, I want to thank you for coming. I think that this program and uh, the discussion that we've heard this afternoon has been very enlightening, and. Um, the hope of the Civic League is that as you watch these, you'll think about the warrant articles that will be before us when town meeting begins April 2nd, Tuesday, April 2nd, when, is that the right time? <laughs> Tuesday? <laughs> yeah, uh, that Tuesday after uh, Easter Monday, Tuesday, April 2nd, um, and uh, 6 p.m. at the high school, and We'll look forward to seeing you all there. Be informed, and away we go. And just uh, to pick up the theme of the defined contribution versus defined benefit for attending today, the defined benefit is 
refreshments at the back of the room. <laughs> and we have one more. Uh, Will this be available come. on television? The public yes, uh, mm -hmm. I should mention this is going to be broadcast more than you'll want to watch, <laughs> possibly for going far into the future. Right. It's going to be on both NCTV 18. They are going to um, film it, I believe the first time will be Wednesday at 6 p.m. on their television station, but it will also be on the internet if you have internet capability. Um, same with Gino TV. It'll be on Gino TV. Gino says uh, as early as this evening they'll start uh, broadcasting. And it will also be on Gino's website. The advantage, of course, of watching it on the website is that you can fast forward, uh, back up, listen to the pieces that you really want to focus on, and uh, um, that sort of thing. So anyway, again, on behalf of the Civic League, first of all, thank you for all the speakers that were here this afternoon. Uh, we certainly appreciate the time that you took to come in, explain the articles, and uh, to discuss them. Also, thank you to the Executive Board of the Civic League for all the uh, arrangements and work to put this program on. Sarah? I'm looking forward to seeing people next week for Meet the Candidates from uh, 3 o'clock. Here Thank you. Location. Right. Meet the candidates next week. Seven candidates for selectmen, four candidates for the Harbor Shellfish and Advisory Board. Should be an interesting discussion. We'll see you next week. Thank you for coming.